Hi, I'm here. I'm Claudia, by the way. I always forget to introduce myself. So I'm Claudia. I'm here with Mila. I'm actually in Australia and Mila is in Switzerland. So it's the end of my Monday and the start of Mila's Monday, which is just, it's always just so fun working in a whole different time zone. Today, Mila and I are going to be talking about online training. The world of online training where there's courses, there's workout programs, there's courses for clients to have workouts, there's workouts for trainers to learn and there's just there's just so much out there but how do we know what to go for? How do we know what are we signing up for? Um, today we're going to be sharing our experience about what we've come across, where we fell short, where we got a whole bunch of value and some tips for you to be able to be a little bit more aware of what's out there and have the questions to ask of what do you need to look for? What do you need to ask before signing up for a course? Um, so welcome Mila, thanks for joining me. Hi, Claudia. Thank you. I'm really excited for, for this topic because I feel like as an instructor and after being in this field for, for a few years, you kind of go through so many highs and lows that you wish you, you knew or somebody shared with you a bit more on. So I think this is going to be a really nice conversation. Um, as you mentioned, my day is just starting, so it's a little bit dark. You might notice the, the color change over the course of our talk. Um, yeah, so it'll hopefully lighten up on my end a little bit more. But thank you for having me here. I'm really excited for our chat. Yeah, it's only a pleasure. Um, so well, I'm just getting my notes quickly. Okay, so what online courses have you done? I'd love to know. Um, so I haven't done, I hadn't been doing online co courses prior to COVID. So I did my uh, training and then I did some follow-up trainings and I just never even considered the online world until COVID hit and it kind of became a, a necessity. And then I thought, okay, well, since we're at home so much and I had to stop my online classes, uh, sorry, my in-person classes, I thought, okay, it'll be a great opportunity to do some training, but I can't travel anywhere. So I started to uh, explore this option and I was very, very skeptical of it. Um, and I've done two, I've done two online courses since COVID um, for my, per, uh, for, for my uh, development, uh, personal development as an instructor. And the first one that I did was kind of shocked and it felt normal in the beginning, but then afterwards I felt oh my gosh, I can't believe I spent so much money. And I felt like I got so little out of it. What was, was the course? Very... Pardon? What was the course? So I, I won't mention the provider just in yeah. case it's not it's not okay for me to do so. But it was, an, it was um, more on fascial movement, um, foundation of fa fascial movement and Pilates. So it's very linked to, to Pilates. And even though it was a foundational uh, course, I felt that the information was very spread out during the course. So I felt like a lot more could have been covered over the, I think it was two, three days of full day, almost full day, several hours every day uh, trainings. And um, initially I was like, oh, okay, this is like nice. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning things I knew, but okay, uh, it's fine. I'm getting a little more in depth, but I still felt a little bit robbed for my money. And this is where I, I guess it was a lesson learned because when I did another training and my expectation wasn't as high because the bar was kind of set quite low and I was so overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge I received. And I was like, wow, like this online course that I did offered me so much more than any in-person class. And I started to understand the value of online training because you have 
supporting information. You know, when it's an online recording, a recording, for example, or recorded live session, you retain so much more because you can rewatch it. Yes. And then it's supporting documents that are easily available. And I realized, oh my gosh, and my in-person workshops weren't as effective as this because we were told to buy books that you know we opened for a page or two and they were expensive books i mean at the end of the day if you're buying several books and you're paying for the workshop things are adding up um so depending on where you are it could seem like a lot and it seemed like a lot for me um so the the difference between the two was so big was so black and white because one left me with a lot of props. Um, some books, uh, uh, notebooks that were recommended from this provider and stuff that like is still packed away, you know, <laughs> uh, that I have barely or haven't used at all. And the other one was snips of like PDFs, little uh, videos, well, l l short and long form videos of just value packed information. Therefore, the difference is so stark that if, I guess there'll always be trial and error, but online has so much to offer when it is properly done. Mm. And it can be a, a complete waste of money because the two workshops, uh, two trainings offered, uh, sorry, they, they were the same time frame and the same price, but the offer was so different. And at least that was my experience, but I'd love to know uh, from your end how long you've been doing workshops or trainings and maybe your experience a little bit with that and if it was similar or different to mine. Mm, thank you. That's There's so much insight in there and it reminded me of so much that I've had to deal with <laughs> with a lot of the courses. And... Um, yeah, when I first started, it was an online, uh, it was a face-to-face -face course, um, which, yeah, it was really intense. So there were 600 hours of practical training that we were required to do, um, watching, observing, and doing all the workouts that we could in order to allow that to become more normal for our bodies and for us to really understand movement, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, however, there was like, there was no, no books given. <laughs> we I used to draw little stick figures <laughs> as to try and remember what the positions were, but we were required just to remember everything off by heart and take note when we could. Um, so that was a really intense training, but because I worked at the studio nine hours a day for six years, it all just became very natural and it flowed. It was a really strict course, um, which I was really grateful for when I came across other courses, uh, when I did the next course that was personal training and that was a lot of on it was all online but all we got was a book and there was no pre-recorded work for us we just had to answer multiple choice questions and read through um data that was on the actual computer had to just read the content so there weren't any videos and things like there are today uh, when I did the PT course and then I did um, a when I did the PT course luckily I had some movement experience because there was no one teaching us how to keep clients safe there was no anatomy in the course. It was actually quite alarming as to how people would get uh, they would get qualified 
by not mm -hmm. having the necessary qualifications. So there was a whole bunch of knowledge missing from that course that luckily I had. But I just think about a lot of trainers out there that had gone for that same course and just they got qualified, started to teach clients and what ended up happening then, who knows. So there was no, um, there was no requirements to have the, the practical training and there was nowhere to ask questions <laughs> and no one to get any help from. So yeah, that was a whole different world, um, which I, that wasn't a great course for me to do. I know there's other courses out there that teach PTs in a different way. So um, yeah, this, this particular place just isn't something that I would mention, but I wouldn't, it's it's a great experience that I had to understand the difference between the courses um, and then when you mentioned the face-to-face -face training I went to some face-to-face -face training as well and yes they they fly through the exercises and yes. you, you just hope that you can try and remember everything yes quickly <laughs> quickly and then you need to watch and you need to try and remember and by the day, time the day is done it's like okay Ah, oh, what was that exercise? Oh, what did they do? Uh, you don't really get that much value from those, like from every face-to-face -face course. Mm -hmm. But if I had maybe asked the questions of what was involved, if there's any kind of um, any recordings that I could re-watch, any kind of support after that workshop that we can be reminded of things. There was nothing of that. But I think looking back, I would have asked like a lot of other questions for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think as a, as at least uh, in my case, as a newbie instructor, you're, you're, you're new to the world. So you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Right. So you don't ask, like now I know all the things I would have, you know, asked or looked for. But back then, you you don't know, you don't have that expectation, that experience to know when you're, you know, given value education. Or yeah. if somebody's honestly kind of like stealing your money a little bit, because mm. that's how it, how it feels, um, you know, especially. And as you were uh, speaking, something came to my mind um, is the value of online training that I've discovered. And you mentioned this too, you go into in-person trainings or workshops and it can be a little bit overwhelming because you're trying to look, listen and write. Yes. And I don't know, maybe some people can do all three, but I can only do one at a time. Mm. So in order for me to really stay focused. So if you're Paying attention, great. And then say you've done maybe a four hour before your break or, you know, one and a half hours before a short break. And then you're completed maybe four, six or eight hours, depending on your training in a day. When you leave, how much of that do you truly retain? Mm. And yes, a lot. The truth is when you have like practical experience that follows, yes, a lot. Um, but one thing that I have really started to appreciate with online courses First, there's no travel factor, so it's, it's easier and you can really take a course anywhere in the world. And I think that's a huge benefit because I find at least where I am in Switzerland, we lack, we lack if I can say that, those really knowledge-based trainings that I've seen internationally, like some of the trainings that I've taken out of uh, Canada has have been incredible Um and I don't want to limit myself because of the distance. So you know, when you have to travel, then you're stopping work. Whereas if it's usually a weekend course, you don't really have to stop teaching clients. You just you know spend your weekend doing the course, which works. But the value also for me is if you can rewatch, if you have time mm -hmm. in between to to think about, not have to you know rush to your hotel room, you know maybe do some sightseeing depending where you are. <laughs> but you, you're really committed or um, emerge yourself into your training, and I found that very beneficial because even to this day, I'm able to go and rewatch some things 
or you know one of my trainings consisted of um some of it was live and some of it was pre-recorded videos that I watched and I value those pre-recorded videos so much because you can re-watch especially when it's a lot of value added in a in a short clip you can re-watch several times and really take you know mm-hmm. pause think about what you need to think about therefore I really think there's a lot of potential a lot of future in online training and I personally absolutely love it I think in order for me to get to an in-person workshop or training it would have to be something spectacular Mm. something that an online training world can't offer anymore Um, so there's pros and cons to to all of it and this is honestly where I would love to hear a little bit more insight about the empowered instructor because I respect you as instructors so much and I think we have so much in common with how we see training you know we see teaching the instructor the client versus Mm -hmm. like exercise xyz breathe in here and this is the right or wrong way to do it and this is what I really value about speaking with you and I'd love to know a little bit more about the empowered instructor if you could give me a you know a bit of an insight of how you do it yeah thank you I um the empowered instructor was um an idea of mine because it it came across after doing many courses and realizing how instructors are just never really ready straight away Mm -hmm. after qualifying due to the practical side of things that there's no pre-recordings for them to re-watch there's no um a lot of the time there's gaps in their knowledge regarding how to start a studio and how to take care of yourself and not put yourself last and how to market yourself (laughs) when no one's really taught this kind of stuff when you're going for a movements course. So what I've looked at is all the ins and outs of my journey and all the courses that I've done and what they generally, what works, what doesn't work. And Mm -hmm. I found that doing pre-recorded stuff really helps, especially when there's mindset. So we have a big component of mindset in the first week. It's an eight week program currently. I will be extending it as I go along, but, um, at this stage the first part is mindset which I find if we can help ourselves with a positive mindset and learn to develop that courage and confidence within us and value what we have to offer then the rest of the work is a lot more possible because if Mm -hmm. you're telling someone you need to charge more how are they going to be charging more for their services if they do not f- believe in themselves? So yeah. there's the pre-recorded content where I guide instructors through ways of learning to progress in their teaching, learning to manage their business with ease and grow and share their offering. Everything from social media to deeper results with clients really getting the true outcomes with their clients and instead of looking at what workout we're doing let's look at like we've discussed before just Mm -hmm. developing a workout according to the clients in front of them Mm -hmm. yeah I you know it's so interesting as you were speaking because I realized the things that i was missing when I completed my training because you taught exercise modifications. Perfect. Excellent. Love my training. But I left with, okay, but at the end of the day, it is business for us. As much as we are passionate about it, it is mm. business. But what do we do? How do mm. we run a successful business? We don't have to be experts, but we have to have an understanding. Mm. Or even social media. Today, there's so much... I want to say pressure, but actually I I think it's good pressure to be on social media because personally, I use that as my way to like vet a workshop, a person, just to see it's like a little sneak peek into into, um, the person or the the training school. Mm 
Yeah. And we leave. I remember thinking like, okay, Pilates classes have to start offering social media training now, you know, because you you have to have a little bit of understanding into how to promote or market yourself, mm. whichever way you choose. Yeah. And it's so there's so much more to being a, an instructor than teaching a client nowadays. You have to know more, especially if you want to be a business owner or see yourself becoming a business owner eventually. Yeah, exactly. And the participants that have been part of the program, um, currently we're in week four of this round and already I can see the difference with their social media posts and just discovering how to be more specific with your posts and post to your ideal clients, but also how to find your ideal clients. What are they? So mm -hmm. there's the intention behind the posts um, that we also need to just be looking at. And everyone comes wanting more followers, but they don't understand that it's not just the amount of followers. It's who's engaging and is anyone picking up the phone to call you? Um, and there's also the support behind it because I do find that even though we are working with other instructors or if you're working for someone or you're a sole trader and you work on your own, either way, it's you at the end of the day you are your brand, you need to show up whether you feel like it or not, if you're having a good day or not, and just make it work. And I think it can be a little bit of a lonely world out there if you don't have anyone to bounce any ideas off or you're trying things and nothing's working. But you may have just tried it once. <laughs> and from an outsider's perspective, just having some guidance and I, I help, I just coach people into what they could do and we come up with a plan together. So there's clear strategies, really simple tools to be using to put into place over the, the period that they're there. And they have con the access to the content for six months. So they don't have to finish it within the eight mm -hmm. weeks. Um, but working through it systematically, you get through the stuff. And then there's workbooks to be working through for your own personal use of how are you going to grow. You don't know, you're, you're not going to reach your goals if you don't know what your goals are, how clear are they, and how measurable is that goal to you? Like, mm -hmm. How do you know you've reached there? You want to earn more money? Okay, okay. How much money? Yeah. How many classes do you need? How many clients? So it's these yeah. little details that make the biggest difference. And yeah, that's what the program's all about. It's not a, I remember you asking me if it need, if it has an exam. It's not a course as such. Um, so there's no exam. The best thing is that these strategies have been proven and I've just been seeing instructors flourish and the next part of when they put these tools into place which is where we're at now is they get very busy <laughs> and they get lots of clients coming in but then where's the boundary of how many sessions they're teaching so it's managing these the whole journey of the instructor from start to where they are managing a business i love hearing that because you mentioned it really well, even though you're working with clients, you are on your own or, you know, it can be quite lonesome, especially in, I want to say in the online world, but it also depends on your in-person setting. If you're not surrounded by other instructors and you're with clients, yes, it's great. Um, I love that interaction. But at times having colleagues is the part that can be lacking. And I feel like in today's you know, online community, we don't have to have colleagues that are 
right next to us, you know? You could learn so much more from somebody on the other side of the world having, you know, similar or different experiences. And I love that we've crossed that boundary of, you know, proximity of colleagues. Mm. And now we can be, you know, it's, it's, it is like a, um, a group that you can support, rely on, like you said, even just bounce ideas with. So having someone else there with you, guiding you can really make the world of a difference. And even when you cross that boundary, you know, I've had several moments where I've felt burnt out because you're like, great, it's picking up. But when do you stop? Because a burnout is useless. Once you burn out, you have to take a break. So you go up and then you go down uh, with clientele. And it just, it can seem so overwhelming Mm. because you get caught up in the current of it. Yeah. That that guidance is just never taught. Um, And I don't think everyone needs to go through through the experience of it to learn from it. You know, and I think I mentioned this in the first time we we spoke, you can either learn by by like your own mistakes, or you can learn from other people's mistakes. (laughs) And I think it's just so much more, you know, healthy for your uh, mental health if you can learn of other people's mistakes because I think collectively um, as a community if we're much more supportive we can grow much faster as individuals Mm. you know yeah exactly and it's it's really interesting how yes we we've crossed that boundary of it doesn't matter where you're at Um, Mm. and having this program now online really helps instructors who have potentially done programs that we've been through that there's not much Mm -hmm. detail to them and then they just walk out feeling a little bit lost so um yeah before we carry on I just want to retouch on things that people need to ask or tips of when they are signing up for a course what are they looking for I I was actually just thinking of that um, (laughs) as well like oh we should we should uh, touch touch on that a little bit Um, from my experience or where I what I would do differently next time is I would vet something a little bit more on social media or try to speak to someone that has done the course. Mm. Because the first course um, that I took, the one that's focused on, you know, the um, foundation of fascial movement and uh, the Pilates practice, um, I knew from this training school that I think is great, but I knew that people were always a little bit like, oh, I felt like I've covered that, or I felt like it wasn't that new of information. But for some reason, I expected it different. I I thought it would be something despite what I heard it would be. And I think it's not the reality. You know, every workshop training will have good and bad reviews because Mm. we're all different. But you can get a feel for something. And don't expect something to be different just because you think it's interesting. You know, I I think a lot of us think, no, but but this one will be better. Um, Because, no, it's going to be, I think, more or less what maybe your friends or the reviews that you've seen the major the majority of them sorry will say so don't don't expect it to be different just because you think it's going to be great you know um again got nice information but was it worth the money no and I think at the end of the day like you will do a trial and error but try to listen or speak to people that have done it Mm -hmm. And now with social media, there is no restriction. You know, before I did the second training, because I was so skeptical, the one that offered me so much value, I spoke with other instructors and I actually um, got on a call with other Pilates instructors that have done this training. And I said, hey, look, like I know a little bit of this, you know, a little bit of that. Do you want to have a little session online where I can offer you what I know in case you're ever interested and you can offer me this training because I'm looking into doing it. And in my case, it was a yes. So we had a, a free, well, I didn't even have to pay to learn about the exercises right. to see an instructor speak how she applies this into her Pilates practice. And I was blown away. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so there's that like the, I, I didn't have anyone near me you know without being so online I would I would walk around nobody here like I, I wouldn't be able to find out what the training was like but mm -hmm. online it was so simple yeah and I spoke to several other instructors some replied some didn't even bother replying it doesn't matter I got to ask the responses I got was so helpful wow. and that was really the push that I was like, okay, look, several people who are instructors like me mm. have learned to apply this and they're so passionate about it. I'm going to give it a, a go. And so I came in already understanding a, a, quite a bit of how the training would go and what I would learn. So my expectation was set. Of course, yeah. they, they, I was blown away by the amount of information I received. And I was so great that I can rewatch it to this day. But feedback from people that have taken it. Yeah, um, definitely. I think that is such a good point. And nowadays, you're able to look at who has done the course, whether it's testimonials mm -hmm. or they tag them when they come to the workshop. And you can just try and get onto... Um, what they found um yeah. so there's the expect the, the the feedback that they um that they have regarding the course that way you're not going in with closed eyes you sort of know okay this is great um if you don't have anyone to ask I would think also asking them what is the expected outcome I love that what what yes. do we what do we walk out with? So going mm -hmm. to the course provider or the workshop and just sending them a message, like sending DMs on Instagram are pretty easy. And asking these kind of questions of can you send me someone who's done the course that I could maybe talk to and bounce ideas off, expected mm -hmm. outcomes, and uh, is there any support afterwards? Mm -hmm. all pre-recorded and the support afterwards is so important because in the moment you can feel like you have learned so much and then you leave and you're like wait 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 it made sense on the day but right now <laughs> and and I had that and you know what was a little bit um shocking is that during one of the trainings the one that I didn't appreciate as much I they were like, oh, ask questions, ask questions. So I emailed with a question. I didn't get a response for several days. Followed up with the question. The person responded like, yes, I've been like really busy with, uh, with workshops. I'm going to get back to you. And I just thought, okay. Mm. Like, the, I guess maybe like my tone of voice is not the tone of voice that they, they used when they were writing an email. Yeah. But that's something also to consider um, is that support that comes after. And I think that's, important because we're all going to have questions and if you don't have questions you're not digging deep enough into your training you should like you shouldn't take anything as like okay it's the way it was taught but why should for me it's the always like but why but for who mm -hmm. um you know you have to go through that if you don't go through that kind of doubting process uh that skepticism with movement with application of it you're not really learning right you're just being told you know and, and you can usually tell that with an instructor who's done a, a a pretty bad course they will say oh that's that's the correct way to do it no that that's how you should do it why because that's the correct way to do it oh, we learned okay. that that's the correct way to do it and i said like, oh my god okay you know, it tells me enough about you as an instructor when you say that yeah. um, versus being able to really explore, oh, okay, well, you know, you would apply this for this type of client, but not for this. And, you know, even being able to say, oh, I don't fully understand why here. Let me get back to you and go back to the person that offered you that, you know, valuable information, because without that, um, I think, I think we're just wasting our money on courses. Oh, yes. Because totally. they're so expensive. Yeah, yeah. And it can cost thousands of dollars to first get qualified, but then you have to get, it's really good to keep up the training, keep mm -hmm. up with being interested <laughs> and learning mm -hmm. new things, whether it's Pilates or something different. Like I went into yoga instructing course and that was a really fantastic course, very in-depth, but 
just always learning and going through a path of what interests you and what you're curious about. Um, mm -hmm. And something that stood out to me when you were talking is the support factor. So something about um, what I love about what you're offering, whether it's, it's, it's especially your posts, but now this amazing program that you've got out that is going to be so, it sounds so supportive for anyone, whether it's instructors wanting more info on exercises or it's clients or people wanting to learn how to have a workout. And it's mm -hmm. just so supportive and tailored. So please tell us a little bit more. I think you mentioned it's called the Incorpo Studio. Yeah, I I would love to talk about that. I think we can cover this in our four, fourth session as we talk about online classes that we, that we give as instructors because I know we wanted to really compare them to in person and talk about the value added there. Um, but just to touch base for what, we, what we'll discuss in our next um, talk is that with Incorpore Studio, so it comes from the phrase men sana in corpore sano, which is a, a Latin phrase, which means a healthy body and a healthy mind. So we didn't want to name it anything that would like refer to, you know, pump the body, you know, like break some sweat or anything like that because we felt that, you know, in the greater scale of things, it's it's irrelevant because for me and the way that me and my team work is that we want to train for longevity. You know, our goal is, which is, I, I wrote this to you in an email, you know, you have the empowered instructor, but one of our like our goals yeah. or one of our um, like slogans that we want to be using is empower the body, improve your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and you can only do that from our experience with a personalized approach. You know, nowadays we we all know that there are a million platforms um, that offer, you know, videos that you can watch and select. And we thought, okay, that's great. But a lot of it is not tailored to somebody with an injury or somebody with a movement limitation, you know, or sometimes I've even done like these um, programs. I remember when I was or learning something and you have like level one okay super easy level two okay hard level three impossible yeah and, you know, the, the steps <laughs> the steps are like whoa night and day you know like handstand <laughs> do a plank warm up the wrist now get into a handstand yeah. <laughs> and you're like wait 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 mm. so we we have five levels of progression that we really systematically take someone um all the way to level five, but you don't have to be there as long as you're training for your body. And we have a virtual instructor that will check in, make sure that the level is right for you. And you can, it will basically readjust based on how you interact with the, with the, with the virtual instructor or the instructors on the platform. So I'd love to speak more about that. Um, but just to slightly go back to the, um, workshops before we move forward onto the online classes if I could give instructors one piece of advice from the from the get-go when selecting a workshop is be demanding be demanding and if somebody doesn't meet the whys and the hows don't do it and you know, you may think, oh, it's a great course. Trust me, there's another one. Go speak to a different instructor online. You will find there's so much online. You're not restricted to an in-person workshop. There are fantastic courses online. I think um, if people would love to share in, in this video, in the comment section, ones that they've taken that they've liked, or even those that they haven't, because you know, collectively we are spending money, so we should be able to speak about the things that didn't work for us. You don't have to bad mouth, but you know what didn't work for you. Mm. Um, because as the online uh, community is growing, you, you know, we can only expect workshops to be better if we demand them to be better. If we accept things for how they are and being unhappy with them, being like, okay, well, that's online training. I should probably blah, blah, blah. No, you know, this is really where we have a lot of power and control mm -hmm. uh, as instructors is to ask the questions 
And if somebody thinks that your questions are, are dumb or silly or they don't have time to respond to you, that person isn't going to offer you a valuable uh, experience or isn't going to offer value for the money that you're going to spend, which in return is just not worth it. Yeah, that is such a powerful point. Be demanding. Um, yes. it, it's so true. There are many courses out there and I think it's gone, it's it's sort of gone full circle from being very personable to only online. And now yeah. people are looking for a more personal approach where you have a person to talk to. We're sick of just talking to robots, but we also just, it, that support factor. And yes, there are so many courses out there that, there's many things you can choose from. So try and work with people that are wanting to support you to become a better instructor instead of, well, not a better instructor, but just to improve and and evolve your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I love that piece of advice, Mila. And mm -hmm. I thank you for this lovely chat with you i think it's so insightful and i love being able to share all these points with instructors out there because yeah i know it can be a really confusing world <laughs> out there and we are here for you um to help you and please do leave any comments below of great courses that you have enjoyed we don't need to know the ones not to go to, just the ones we need to look at would be really good. <laughs> yeah, so mm -hmm. thanks, Mila, for your time. And we will see you all for part four next time. Perfect. Thank you so much, Claudia. I'm really looking forward to part four and talking about this online class experience because I know it will be another really, really great conversation. Um, I really think... Chatting with you is so easy and it flows so naturally because we have so much in common. And one of the great things about online is that I got to connect with you. You know, we're in different parts of the world, but it doesn't mean that um, we, we have this opportunity to sort of share and connect. And I think the online world has so much to offer. And this is a great example of it. Yeah, that is such a good point. Thank you so much, Mila. I am super grateful for online too. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have never met. It's so true. thank you. Thank we'll see you. you next time. Bye.